Revelations 11, 12, they hear a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, and they ascend up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. I'm going to reword that to say, They hear a great voice from heaven saying, Come up here, and they ascend up to heaven in a cloud, and enemies beheld them. Now, uh, the voice that they hear is the Greek word phone, actually, which means disclosure from the kingdom of God's spacecraft. In other words, they receive a communication from the kingdom of God saying it's exit time. Now, only they get that information. That's not for everybody to hear. Whenever the kingdom of God is talking about uh, having a voice, uh, it's, it's, it's a, a strictly a communication. Now, when they say it's a trumpet blowing, then that's a public announcement of some sort, blowing the horn. And that's what T and O did when they first started out in uh, Los Angeles, the city of God, the New Jerusalem, in 1975 in uh, uh, April, where the, the first group of individuals left everything behind to join them. Um, now, their ascension into the clouds, the sky, the heavens, is a spirit birth. Thus, it's not witnessed by others except in their exit video testimonies that demonstrated their method of exit was voluntary. I'm talking about the Heaven's Gate group. Who T and Do were the founders of. Um, so to think that they were supposed to take their physical bodies with them is not scriptural. In fact, as this was the harvest spoken of in Revelation chapter 14, the wheat, Jesus compared the soul seeds his father planted with wheat, and the tares were look-alike plants that were sown by the wicked one, the Luciferian space aliens, the fallen angels, the Nephilim. The Nephilim were actually uh, uh, the species of the humans that were... Uh, that became the tribe uh, as a result of the Luciferian space aliens uh, cohabitating with uh, humans. And the only difference between the space aliens and humans is that the space aliens uh, are uh, individuals that at one time received uh, uh, a soul implant um, by the kingdom of God, by the level above human, and uh, were given were in a classroom situation to a certain degree to where they were given uh, they were close to graduating to where they were they gave their lives and they were given uh, a, a spacecraft and a new body to use and that new body uh, lived a lot longer but um, uh, but any, anyway, when they ended up uh, making uh, babies through other, whatever means, hybridization, or if they actually uh, were able to fertilize uh, the humans, um, which they would have had to have plumbing to do so, you know, uh, human reproductive systems, um, then their seed was passed to the human eggs, and therefore the humans' babies that came from that would have been of the same mindset because that's, that sperm carries the genetic memory of uh, the father, the parent, as well as the, you know, the egg that carries the genetic uh, um, record of, of, the, of the woman. But uh, in the case of the male, it's, the genetic code is more up to date because uh, that's the way the sperm is generated uh, um, on the spot, years after the, that egg had been already been formed in the, in the female. 
Anyway, so the, the, the well, I guess I want to go into Revelation chapter 14 just a little bit because it talks about who is actually found to be worthy of harvest. Uh, and Christians pay attention to this because uh, just be, just believing has its value in getting you basically to uh, look to the next level, look to the kingdom of God um, for help. But, uh, um, and that's always believing in the representative. But believing also has to do with believing everything that representative said, for instance, Jesus, and what he told us to do, and, and how to act, and how to behave, all and keep his sayings that he said. And, and uh, we're not disciples of Jesus strictly by believing. A disciple is someone that denies their own will and basically asks the Father, asks Jesus to lead them every step of the way in their lives and, uh, and then looks for ways to enact that. And if you're doing that, you know, fantastic. But if you're doing that, then you will also recognize, because he told, you, told us to watch for his return. Uh, watching is observing. It means, uh, uh, and, and having oil in your lamp means that you have an ability to see. You have, uh, you, know, you have your light turned on so that you can actually look at everything and recognize the signs, the fruit, uh, the ways and behavior, and the modus operandi of any member of the level above human when they come incarnate face to face. And so, when when someone shows up, like Tian and Doe, and they and everybody and a bunch of people uh, leave everything behind to be with them, uh, it doesn't mean that you should automatically believe it, uh, but you should sure as heck test it. And then when they actually lay down their lives voluntarily for the kingdom of God, uh, that's announced globally for the second time. Uh, uh, if you don't pay attention to that and examine it considerably, you know, really give it consideration, then you're actually cutting yourself off from the kingdom of God if you're not observing. So, it says that the, uh, the 144,000 or the 144 tribes, because thousand could also be translated as tribes or families, have their names, have their father's name written in their foreheads. Well, what is the father's